Hey guys, Timothy here for Sharp 11 Music. Welcome back to the channel. So every week we make a transcription and every week we analyze it and discuss it a little bit. And sometimes there's just not much to talk about. And this sounds maybe a little bit harsh, no offense, Michael, but just to give you an example, harmonically, this week's transcription was just C sharp minor seven for eight bars, I think, and then B minor seven for eight bars, and then it alternates, and he plays C sharp minor pentatonic and B minor pentatonic, respectively, and he plays occasionally an A sharp over the C sharp minor, so giving it a Dorian sound. The end. So that wouldn't be much of a video. And then occasionally we have to think and ask ourselves, what is it that we can talk about? Because obviously we chose the solo. There's something there that we think is cool or there's something we can learn from it. There's something. So in this week's transcription, there's actually quite a lot we can take away because I'm not going to make the millionth video on minor pentatonic. You can find enough of that online already. Logically, this would be a good opportunity to discuss something that is less frequently talked about. So there's a couple of avenues we can and we will take to discuss this week's transcription. First, let's talk about sound. So sounds arguably the very first thing we react to. It can define an entire genre uh, and it can be the difference between liking something and not liking something, even if they are the same notes. And when playing an instrument, sound can be, roughly speaking, subdivided into two categories. You have timbre, so it's a piano, it's a violin, it's a guitar, and even further than that, it's a guitar, it's a clean guitar or a distorted guitar with single coils or humbuckers or whatever, that type of stuff. And then you have intensity, which has to do with dynamics and articulations. There is a third subdivision we can add and that has to do with timing and feel, but we're not really gonna get into that today. Just know that it's there. So I'm gonna jump around a little bit today and I'm gonna go off on some tangents and hopefully it'll make sense in the end. So let's take a couple of artists and let's group them together. So we have Jimi Hendrix, Steve Ray Vaughan, Scott Henderson, Michael Landau, Joe Satriani, then we have Alan Holdsworth with Tim Miller, Sean Lane, Steve Vai, Michael James Romeo. We have Al Di Miola with John Petrucci and Steve Morse. And so these little groups contain guitarists with similar uh, styles of playing or similar ways of playing. And yet they have their own voice or personalities. Alan Holdsworth is even here a little bit of an outlier because he spawned like two types of guitar players. On the one hand you have guys like Tim Miller and on the other hand you have guys like Sean Lane and Michael James Romeo. And by the way I know I'm excluding a lot of guitar players but this is just to make my point. So these can be seen as broad categorizations of playing styles and actually of articulation styles. So again articulation is the way we play a note. And to come back to Michael Landau Michael Landau's sound on this recording of where the, this transcription is from is very satisfying to me. So that's personal taste. I like the timbre of his sound, the amp, the distortion, the effect. But there's also his intensity or the way he plays the notes that creates a lot of excitement. And that's kind of the point of the video. The way you play a note determines a large portion of your sound. Alan Holdsworth sounds like Alan Holdsworth because of the way he plays a note. What he plays is another element, but it's not necessarily the element. The same thing goes for Pat Metheny, John Schofield, Wes Montgomery, Joe Satriani, Jim Hall, and on and on. So that's point one. And that kind of leads into point two which is the importance of the blues. So this solo is all minor pentatonic, blues scale, that kind of stuff. So it's obvious that Michael is influenced by blues playing. And this is something I learned a couple of years ago. I always struggled with this. Like I always got the comment that I played in a sort of cold or distant fashion. And I had a guitar teacher at l finally that, that kind of made me transcribe Jimi Hendrix and learn all of 
well, not all of his stuff, but learn his stuff through transcribing it and trying to match the way he played. A lot of things started to click from then on. And it's also something that Frank Ambale says in his interview with Rick Beato, actually, and that's the, that the blues can teach you how to play with intensity or play from the st from your stomach, as some may say. And that's one of the pitfalls of studying jazz, in my opinion. It's a very humble, personal opinion. And it's just something that I struggled with. I was very much in my head and thinking about scales and modes and harmonic substitutions and enclosures and playing the right notes but there was as rightfully commented not really much intensity or whatever in there which is normal because you're we're all learning and we're all at different points of mastery of of certain material so it's natural that you're very occupied with one thing so you lose track of something else but i think that when you start to focus on this thing as well, it kind of, it's one of those things that really can just push you along when you're feeling stuck. Like you don't know what, what else you can do. You're trying to play all the right notes, but it's just not really coming together. So here's a tip. Be aware of your intensity of how you're playing. And so learning to play the blues, your harmonic language may be, it can maybe shrink. In some way, it, it's it's simplified because you just have the pentatonic scale and some blues notes, but it doesn't mean it's therefore simplistic because it's all about attitude and intensity. So if you see guys play like Steve Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, Scott Henderson, like these guys are sweating, they're digging into those notes, they are bending the strings up to their ears it's really, it takes a lot of effort and energy on your part when you're playing like that. It really, it really feels like you're putting in a lot of effort. You are putting in a lot of effort. And that's exactly what you're after, actually. If you combine that with the harmonic palette you would like to develop and going all over the place and playing outside and all those different things, you get to place you get to people like Scott Henderson and Michael Brecker and Bob Burke and all those guys that really just they blow you away with just their intensity of playing, but they're also playing this crazy harmonic shit. By the way, let me make something very clear. There's nothing wrong with being on the other side of the spectrum. I'm definitely not an advocate for loud good, quiet bad. Not at all because you can also play quietly with a lot of intent and intensity. Then we have people like Paul Desmond, Chet Baker, Jim Hall, that's those guys. And it's just a different energy, but there is an energy. And that's, I think the main point of it all. This week's transcription just happens to have that loud, dirty, in your face kind of attitude, that kind of elements, but it's one element out of many. And it is something that's not really discussed a whole lot. You get a lot of videos and lessons on here's a pentatonic scale and here's blah, 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 and yada, 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 yada. But th this, there's never really a lot of talk on how do you play this? Do you maybe want to play it finger style? Do you want to play it legato instead of just here's a hammer on, here's a pull off, here's alternate picking, here's sweep picking? Yes, but there, I think a better way to think of it is they're all tools. They are, they are all different ways of articulation. They all have a different sound to them and they have a different sonic effect. If you're tapping something, it sounds very differently from when you play something with all alternate picking. It's a different effect. And I think that's one of these, one of these things for me that was important to realize and really in a way, zoom in on your own playing at the same time as zooming out, if that makes sense. You're getting into such a detailed thing which makes your overall sound different. Anyway, those were kind of my points to take away from this particular solo. So sound and maybe even more so 
the way you play something. And for us guitar players, articulations. Because if you talk to saxophone players, they're always talking about articulation and slurring and tonguing something. And as guitar players, we're not really that in tune with it. It's really like, okay, I'm doing hammer-ons and pull-offs or I'm doing alternate picking or whatever. But it is like a saxophone player. If you play hammer-on pull-off, it's the same as a slur. And when they tongue, we pick. And even when you pick, do you use a downstroke? Do you use an upstroke? What angle is your pick in? Do you finger pick? Do you have a little percussive slapping sound to it? All of those things. And the guys we admire, I'm pretty sure they were aware of those things. Maybe not on a conscious level, but Alan Holsworth is a very good example for a lot of things. And even in this case, he was really focused on imitating saxophone. So the way that he, the attack of a certain note would be, is it all legato? Is it all, doesn't, are there any notes that are jumping out and dynamic and those kind of things. So it's very much an awareness game. I hope all of this made a little bit of sense. I went a little bit on a rambling tour. If you have any questions or remarks, you know what to do. Be sure to check out the Patreon for lots more stuff. We're doing a transcription challenge at the moment, so if you want to jump in, go check that out. Subscribe to keep up to date to all the transcriptions and all the talks we're doing, so you're never missing out on anything. Have a nice day, have a nice night, have a nice week, weekend, month, all of that, and see you next time.